Hi, this is Kevin Deal. Today we're going to talk about my home and my Tannoy Westminsters. This is it. This is my house. You know, we bought this place a few years ago. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Tannoy in just a moment and, and why I love them so much. But we bought this house a few years ago and uh, this was a horrible walled unit that we didn't like and it didn't have a nice sound system and that's the big deal to me, right? And it's a massive room. The ceilings are 18 feet tall, and then there's a dining room, and then the kitchen and the entry, and you just, <clears throat> you <laughs> I tried a couple different things, and they would barely, like, make a peep in here. I mean, I just could not pressurize the room. I couldn't get any base, and I tried this, I tried that. And then I said, you know, I'm going to bring the Westminsters over. And first, I'm going to bring them over and see how the wife uh, reacts. And I, I even took a picture of this because she saw this and she said, I love it. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it. And then we played them and they sound amazing. And I'm going to tell you why I chose them. But I want to talk to you about Tannoy just a little bit and why Tannoy is different than any other manufacturer in the world today. Any other manufacturer in the world today. Uh, maybe there's one company that's a little bit. I want you to think about companies that uh, have been in existence for 60, 70 years. Uh, that are still in the game making products the way that they used to, uh, where their speakers have become kind of a collectible. And I think that the only brand I might think of, Altec is really gone. Uh, JBL, uh, I think, but maybe not the same way of a, of, of a Tannoy, kind of a different gig. Klipsch, I think, uh, but Tannoy really does stand alone for making a speaker with an intrinsic value. Uh, you know, I went to the factory in Scotland, and in fact, Kat just went there recently, because these are assembled in Scotland, these are made in Scotland, right? And all these people making all these bullshit claims, they don't make them there. This cabinet is still being made in Europe at a furniture factory where they have been made for many, decades and they are made the same way by craftsmen this speaker is 304 pounds and i'm going to show you a picture of the inside a drawing of the inside because it is so so uh complex you know because it's a folded horn inside and that's how it's able to do two things number one is okay i guess i'm getting to this bigger i'm going to get into it this is a 15 inch uh dual concentric driver and uh, if you want to get bottom end, they have a folded horn inside in the back, and that does two things. It allows this thing to go down to uh, 18 hertz, number one. Number two, it keeps the bass really, really tight because there's a nice amount of back pressure on this driver. And the bottom end is just flat out epic. Behind these grills here are where the base ports are on either side. It also comes with a front grill, which is really nice, and it comes with a locking key. But really, do you want to hide this? Of course you don't. Of course you don't. You want to show this speaker off. Now, what makes this different than other companies, than the Clonoys? First off, they'll never be, they'll never be Tannoy, right? Over in Upland, where I used to live, there was this restaurant that called a, <laughs> called a McDonald's Classic. And it kind of cracked me up because they had, they were trying to give it like this old vibe in a way, but they really blew it. Uh, and then the idea of it being McDonald's Classic, that's like saying Oldsmobile Custom Cutlass 88. It's not custom, all right? It's not classic, all right? To be classic, you have to have a history and you have to have an epic history. And that's why, God damn, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I shouldn't even tell you, but I was just now trying to buy a pair of GRFs, old vintage GRFs, and they were on for sale at an auction site. And they were perfect because they've been, and I didn't even want to listen to them because they won't sound as good as this, right? But I wanted them anyway, because old Tannoys are so collectible, and these speakers supposedly had been locked in a cabinet where they saw no sunlight, and they were in perfect condition. So even though they were up on auction, I'm trying to get the guy to end the auction early. Tell me your price, I'll wire you the money. I'm doing all of this stuff, only to find out that it was a complete scam. He had people 
from Japan and Korea and me and others trying to buy these vintage tannoys and he knew that we would do anything to get them, right? That I was about to wire money just because I figured it can't be a scam. This is too weird. And he, I almost got played. And I have no doubt that some other people did send the money for a speaker that didn't exist. And that's what will always make a speaker like this different. What, may, what else makes it different? This 15-inch driver uses Alnico magnets. And I'm going to tell you what Alnico is. It's voodoo. I mean, and that's why, and it's expensive voodoo. And it is so expensive that very, very, very few companies will use Alnico. And what is the benefit of it sonically? The benefit of this speaker and any of the other tannoys that use them, which would be the Canterbury's, uh, the Kensington's, and then there's a Sterling LZ3 that will also be using um, Alnico. The benefit of them sonically is the way that they breathe when they are turned down. What do I tell you guys when I'm talking about tube amps and stuff? Don't worry about more power. Don't try to power your way to good sound. Drop the noise floor, drop the noise floor. And the difference with this speaker is that it breathes at all. And, and kind of like K-horns, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I mean, K-horns do that too, right? They breathe at lower listening levels, but this speaker is exceptional at it. And then the other thing about this speaker, because of this, this is the Pepper Pot Waveguide. And that's something that they have invented. That's something that they patented. They were the first people to come out with a true dual concentric. It creates a speaker that is playing music back from a single point source. Music is recorded to a single point source. Now you're playing it back the same way. And it means that the cohesiveness that means that it, it doesn't sound like you're listening to multiple drivers uh, and they work so well in crappy rooms. And I gotta tell you something, I have never lived in a room that is crappier than this one yet. I had a, an employee party here recently and everybody's sitting on the sofa and they go, I can't believe it because it so shouldn't sound good. Next to a fireplace here, next to a stairway banister over there, that far away, from a wall, and it still works. It's, it's unbelievable because the sound, the propagation, it's being controlled by the phase correction plug and then by the cone and then by this horn. <laughs> you can't believe it. Oh my God, and then on top of that, the crossover uses all the best stuff like clarity caps and silver plated wire, and they use silver solder. The whole thing is cryogenically treated and then, you're able to fine tune uh, the tonal balance of the speakers by going up or down in uh, up to uh, three decibels up and three decibels down from neutral uh, for high frequency energy. And then you're able to change the slope too to fine tune the top end to your own personal taste. Some people have rooms like this one, which is not only crappy, it's hard and reflective. So I'm able to work with that and try to reduce that kind of a problem. But you know what, that's the other thing that a dual concentric deals with. They deal with really hard rooms better than, uh, than some other speakers do. Oh my God. Uh, they're 99 dB efficient. They are an 8 ohm speaker with a 5 ohm minimum impedance. What does that mean to you? You can run them with a 30 watt, 20 watt tube amplifier. Uh, whatever amp you buy, whatever tube amp you buy, if it has more than one tap, let's say it's got a 4 ohm tap and an 8 ohm tap, the golden rule is that you always try both of them no matter what and use the one that sounds best. And of course, that is after you have let these break in because it takes hundreds of hours to make this amazing rolled cloth surround get into its groove. But once it is there, it is absolutely epic. Oh man, what else do I need to tell you about with this thing? I mean, I, oh, it's bi-wireable. The uh, hookups are on the back and they are using, um, oh my God, the name of the brand.
Ah, oh, shit. Uh, the, the really super expensive ones, okay? Uh, next gens, WBT next gen, that's it. And so you're gonna have two sets of positive, two sets of negative. You can use the jumpers or by wire. And then there's an additional connector, which is black. And that is for hooking the wire up to your amplifier so you can help to drop noise floor in certain circumstances for your entire system. I'm running this with a Prima Luna Evo 400 power amp. It's kind of a surround system in a way, even though we never use it. We don't watch movies, not our gig. We like music and music. These things will absolutely do. Oh man, look, go to your local Tannoy dealer. If you have a local dealer, I want you to make sure to support them because every town is better off with a, a hi-fi store and a record store. That is my personal belief. But you can reach out to uh, us and we can uh, help you through a retail store that we know. I mean, look, I wanna make sure that you're happy. That's the point here. And if you buy a pair of Tannoy GR speakers, you're gonna buy something that is built to last a lifetime and you won't even know it. The pain of the purchase price will go away shortly, but it's gonna be just an epic purchase that you will love forever. Thank you.